ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the no special summoning allowed brown boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button. As we climb even higher the 1400 ladder, we're only a few away. I know I keep on saying it every video, but one of, one of these videos, and I think it's going to be within the next couple videos, we're going to hit the 1400 ladder, and then I'm going to say, as we climb closer to the 1500, or I might just say, hey, you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to drop it like it's hot and just not say that no more. Anyways, I'm going to shut up and talk about this stun deck that actually did well at the 3v3 YCS in Las Vegas, piloted by your boy Slimix, Team Symmetry, and of course, Agent Persuasion, aka Johnny Nguyen. Uh, he went 7-1 after day one. Um, they had a couple feature matches, and of course, it was funny that Konami didn't want to call the deck stun or anti-meta, even though that is what this is. I'm sorry that this kind of slipped under the radar between my health and trying to get this heart monitor and everything else. I, I didn't realize that this is literally five days old on his channel. Um, but I wanted to talk about it because it's actually kind of funny because my dad's been playing stun on Master Duel, aka Master Shits, and he's been like winning every single game he plays. Now, granted, it's best of one, but his build's not that far off from this. And you know him, he's a Mystic Mine and Stun Scrub player, Table 500, Electric Boogaloo, like, you know. That's how he is. He likes these kinds of decks. But it's actually also, all jokes aside and roasting aside, Stun's actually a really good meta call right now, if you think about it. So anyway, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to dive on into this. Um, he played three copies of Shifter with two Ecclesia, three Dyna, two of the Water Barrier Statue, and then three Jowgen. So let, let's go ahead and break this down here. So of course, Shifter is just an auto-win card. It's absolutely busted. It doesn't need any explaining. Dinah and the Water Statue. The Water Statue is actually really insane. Uh, I didn't realize this until my dad actually started playing Stun. And he was playing the Water Statue. And if you think about it, Snake Eyes Fire King, and to a lesser extent the pure Snake Eyes deck, because they can put up Warlord Savage and Baron and things like that. But the Snake Eyes Fire King deck specifically doesn't play any water monsters. So you can summon out the, you know, Water Torrent and, you know, hit it with a Moon Mirror Shield and, like, now they can't special summon. Their Promethean Princess is turned off because you're never going to be special summoning. It really hurts the deck. And even the regular Snake Eyes deck, even with the Snake Eyes field spell pumping everything up by like, what is it, 1100? Even then, if you have Moon Mirror up, then you're good. Now, my dad's been messing around with Clockwork Knight because you don't care about everything changing to a machine, but it increases all your monsters attack by 500, then decreases all the opponents by 500. So even with the Snake Eyes Field Spell increasing everything by 11, they're all going to lose 500. So even if you don't have the Moon Mirror Shield, then as long as you got the Clockwork Knight up, you're good. So Clockwork Knight is something interesting to kind of keep in mind that it boosts everything up by 500. I don't know if it's really all that necessary. What is necessary is the Decisive Battle of Goganda because the this card is just really nutty in the most toxic way possible. But yeah, no, the Water Statue is actually absolutely insane in this format. Jalgen, I'm not so much of a fan of just because it can get negated. You have, you do have to keep in mind that, you know, if the Fire King Snake Eye or regular Snake Eye player, you know, go for like Little Knight or if they go for Apollosa, then they can negate this. At the same time, they're probably not going to. So just normal summoning this makes them crap all over the floor because now they just can't special summon. So, um, a very interesting dichotomy. I think that there's, like, other things you could play that may be a little bit better, um, but they opted for borders in the side and not in the main. They said that this was kind of meh. I feel like borders are just super disgusting, but, I mean, if they can go into links and get rid of it, then, you know, it is what it is. But moving on to spells, we've got two Nadir Servant, um, obvious reasons why. Uh, two copies of Time Tearing. They, uh, Johnny said he wanted to play this at three, so did Slim. Uh, I don't really know what you would cut. I feel like two time tiering is fine. You still gotta wait a whole turn before you start drawing two cards. Um, and from that point, like you have to kind of like rely on your mirror forces and your other traps and stuff. Uh, one card of demise because it's card of demise. Uh, two prosperity, two duality. Your extra deck is very limited between punishment and prosperity, so you don't want to be like banishing a bunch of cards. You're already drawing two off of time tiering, so you really don't need extra. So do keep that in mind. Uh, decisive Battle of Goganda. So this card's name becomes Grand Sea King, whatever on the field or grave, we don't care. Once per turn, if a card or cards you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can send one fusion monster that mentions Albaz as a material from your extra deck to the graveyard instead. During the end phase, if you have Albaz on your field or in your grave, you can special Spriggan's monster from hand or deck, blah, 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 blah. We don't care about that. This is a soft once per turn battle and uh, effect protection. So if you have two of these up, then you have two destruction by battle or card effect protection uh, to dump two. So... You know, if you have up three, then you have three protections. The opponent tries to, let's say, Raigeki you. You use the first one, dump a fusion, your monster's protected. They attack into it, use the second one, dump a card, monster's protected. Really a broken card. 
Um, it's yeah, it's it's great. Uh, Moon Mirror, Moon Mirror is good. Some people play this at three. I've seen some play it at one. I think two is perfect. Three can be a little bit cloggy. Double Necro Valley. I mean, do you really need two? I mean, I guess for the overkill, sure. But I feel like if you want to play a third time tiering, you can maybe cut a copy of Necro Valley. Um, because I mean, really, how are the like the Snake Eyes and Fire King decks gonna get rid of this once this is established? People aren't main decking shit like Feather Duster and Cosmic Cyclone. This isn't Master Shits, and even then, the players that do that Master Shits probably aren't that very good anyway. But Master Shits is a terrible game for a reason. Two Storming Mirror Force, so non-targeting returning back to the hand. This card's actually broken in 2024. I say it all the time. No one plays Mirror Force. No one plays Battle Traps in general in 2024. Like, I have specifically even told my dad when I'm, like, trying to get him reacclimated, reacclimated, if I could talk today, to the meta, because all he did was play Mystic Mind for four years and it completely ignored the game. He keeps on thinking in the mindset, well, what if my opponent's backer is, like, a Mirror Force or a, I don't know, a Threatening Roar, like, just something random, Dimensional Prison. You have to get out of that mindset in 2024 because you shouldn't be thinking like that about backer. If you're thinking like that about someone's back row, then you're bad. Like, you shouldn't, th those are bad mindsets to be in because those cards just aren't played anymore. This completely flips that on its head and says, no, you are going to run into a battle trap in 2024 and you're going to lose because of it. Think about the ending Snake Eyes board. You know, outside of Little Knight, what do they have that stops a Storming Mirror Force? Nothing. Flamberge don't do shit. Mascarena don't do shit. Little Knight, like, yeah, they can banish itself and then another one of their monsters. But even then, like, all their other monsters are getting returned either back to the extra deck, to the hand, whatever. This is actually, like, just busted. It doesn't even destroy. It just bounces back to the hand. So I got to give credit where credit's due. Storming Mirror Force is busted. Uh, three copies of Evenly because you're going second game is really hard. Uh, three Dalmatica Punchment because it's good. And three Judgment because it's God Says No. Uh, for the extra deck, three Mirror Jade. You could make these Sanctifiers if you wanted to. Uh, three Bastard Dragon, uh, one Fossil Warrior, two Garua, three Ints with the Omega, uh, the Golden Cloud Beast, uh, Malong, and then the Tri Brigade Arms, Baphilus 2. For the side deck, we're playing two Gamma Seal, uh, two Pancratops because it's better than Fenrir, uh, two copies of Border, two copies of Ultimate Slayer, uh, two Raigeki, two Thrust, and then three Imperial Iron Wall. Uh, not only stops Runic, but also stops Flunder and stuff, which is pretty funny. Um, yeah, it stops anything that wants to banish, honestly. Like, it's it's actually kind of good. Um, so what's my verdict on this? Why did Johnny go 7-1 with this? Well, to be completely honest, it's a 3v3 event, so you can kind of play a little bit of different stuff and get away with it, I feel. And number two, um, decks like this will always do good if the player base is not prepared for it, number one. And number two, they don't see their side deck. Like, that's just really what it is. If you win the die roll and go first and win game one and the opponent doesn't see their side deck, you're going to win the match. These decks can cheese wins. It's not going to win you a YCS unless you're just that lucky. Um, it's it's cute. It's cool. I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, uh, Johnny went 7-1 and one with him. He was a team YCS, so that kind of makes things a bit different. That's also why I don't really care for team YCS events, especially the data that comes out of them, because it just seems a bit inflated, and other decks can do well that probably in a normal, you know, match setting 1v1 would not do all that well. But the concept is here, right? You know, no one's thinking, oh, I need to play around a storming fucking Mirror Force in 2024. The card's garbage. And for all intents and purposes, yeah, in any other scenario, it would be garbage. But when you're playing a stun deck and you can drop out a Fossil Dine and whip out your Diddly and proceed to play with yourself... Yeah, it's good, Sugar Boo Bear. Like, it's it's really good. Shifter's an auto win. Like, even if the Fire King player wins the die roll and go first, you open up your five-card hand, you go draw face Shifter, they're crapping their pants in the feature match, and the judges are going to say, you stank, get on out of here. Like, Shifter's broken AF. That's why it needs to be banned. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, no one's expecting Necro Valley and all this other crap. So, good on Slim, good on Johnny for doing well. I wish I would have covered this sooner, but just my health's been all over the place. I've talked about that ad, ad nauseum at this point. But if you want to pants people at your locals or possibly be that dick at a regional and maybe get your invite, sure. Like, you do you, boo-boo. Um, or if you're someone like my dad who wants to play this kind of shit, yeah, go for it. It's really funny, more than anything. Just don't be that guy that gets pissed off when his stun deck doesn't work against the meta because you either bricked or, like, your opponent saw their side deck, because it's going to happen. They're going to see their side, or they're just going to open better than you, because the issue with the biggest issue with this deck is not seeing a monster, right? I mean, you're playing 13 of them. Sometimes you just won't see them, and really, you're only playing 10, because if you get a card in your graveyard, you don't want to see these other shifters. So, it's, it's cool. It's cool. I'll give it credit where credit is due. 
go ahead and go be that guy at your locals or your OTS championship, whatever, and go piss some people off. If you're playing against me, I'm going to be playing Tenpai Dragon. I'm going to just break your board with Raigekis anyway, so you do you. <laughs> but it is funny, and i got to give credit where credit is due. So congrats to Slim and to Johnny and all y'all dudes for doing well. Um, you holding that little torch is burning as bright as it can with stun, and uh, y'all made it work. So guys, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.